Hello dear friends. Today we are going to discuss polynomial functions. This is the third chapter in our book. We encounter pol polynomials daily in our life. Some countries, for example, use Fahrenheit to measure temperatures. Some countries like ours use Celsius to, temp uh, to measure temperature. So in order to speak a common language, we need to know how these temperatures are related, which is given by this equation. We may present a similar equation for the distances such as uh, miles and kilometers. Some countries measure uh, distances by miles. So if you are driving in one of these countries, we need to know the, this, this relation, which is given by this equation. Uh, if you closely inspect a honeycomb, you'll see that every, uh, around every hexagon, there are six hexagons. If you call this first hexagon, the first ring and the six hexagons and circling this first one, the second ring, how many hexagons are you, do you think uh, we are going to have in the 6th, 7th circ uh, circle or ring? The, this, this, uh, the number of hexagons around the 6th ring or the 7th ring may be calculated by using this formula. Now, all these formulas are special cases of a type of functions called polynomials. If you have, uh, if you have ever been to an amusement park, you must have ridden a roller coaster. The structure of a roller coaster may be defined in terms of such curves. Now, this curve may be written as, uh, as this function. We are not quite interested at the moment what this function is, but assume that the curve of this roller coaster cuts the x-axis at minus 20, minus 5, and 10. Since the curve also cuts the y-axis at 50, if we insert x equals 0, we can find the value of this constant a, which is minus 1 over 20. Now that if we insert minus 1 over 20 in the first equation, we get, and if we also multiply out all the terms, we find this function. Now this is also a special, uh, special type of function which we are going to define in a second. Polynomials are functions of the of the following form a n times x to the n plus a n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 and plus and so on and so forth a 1 x plus a naught is called a polynomial function. For this to be a polynomial function, the degrees of the variables x must be natural numbers. Now, the number n is called the degree of a polynomial. And it must be, as I said, natural number. A n is called the leading coefficient. If we have an nth degree polynomial, A n must be different than zero. A naught is called the constant coefficient. And all the remaining coefficients are just called the coefficients of the polynomial. Now we are going to talk about mainly linear equations and uh, quadratic equations. The first degree uh, equations and second degree equations. A linear equation is a function of the form f of x equals ax plus b. And a quadratic equation is a function of the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, uh, for an equation, for an equation to be quadratic, a must be different than zero. So the second degree term must appear in the equation. For second degree equations, for quadratic equations, we have a special uh, notion called the discriminant of the equation, which is given by this uh, delta equals b squared minus 4ac. If delta is greater than zero, we say that the quadratic equation has two real roots. A root is a number that makes the function zero. If you insert this number into the function, you must get zero. So if the discriminant of a quadratic equation is greater than zero, we have two real roots. And these roots are given by this equation, which is minus b plus minus root of delta over 2a. If the discriminant is zero, there's exactly one real root, and it is minus b over 2a. And if the discriminant is less than zero, there are no real roots, which means that the graph of this quadratic function cannot intersect the x-axis. Now, let's try to visualize the graphs of polynomial functions, and we are just going to do this for uh, first order, first degree, and second degree functions. Let's take the line, uh, let's take the function f of x equals y equals 2x plus 1. 
Now, if we insert x equals 0 in this equation, we get y equals 1. And if we insert y equals 0 in this equation, we get x equals minus 1 over 2. In the previous lecture, we have seen how to how to put these points in the plane. So if we insert these points in the plane, uh, we get these two uh, two points, one on the y axis and one on the x axis. So if you combine these two points, we get the graph of the line y equals two x plus one. We also define a concept for lines, uh, which is called the slope of a line. The slope of a line is simply the ratio in the change in the y uh, coordinates to the uh, to the change in the x coordinate. So how much the line is changing vertically and how much the line is changing horizontally. The ratio is called the slope of the line. So if the uh, if the line uh, is going up in a sense if it's going up the po uh, the slope of the line is positive or in other words if the slope is positive we know that the line is going up if the slope is negative we say that the line is looking down or going down we may have zero slope as well so if the uh, slope of a line is zero there is no change in y coordinate but the x coordinate is changing so we get a sort of constant function a, 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 a parallel line to the x axis the graphs of uh, parabolas the graphs of second degree functions are actually parabolas so if the leading coefficient a in the second degree equation is positive we say that the arms of a, uh, arms of this parabola is looking up and if the leading coefficient a is negative then we say that the arms of the parabola is looking down uh, depending on whether a parabola is looking up or down the maximum or the minimum value of a parabola or a second degree polynomial is called its vertex and it's given by v h comma uh, Q, uh, K. Here H is minus B over 2A and K is F of H. Now let's try to plot the graph of this function F of X equals X squared minus 4X plus 5. We already know that it's a parabola and the graph is already on the screen as you can see. So how did we plot this function? First things first, since A equals 1, the leading coefficient is greater than zero we already know that the arms of the parabola is looking up if you calculate the discriminant of this uh, second degree polynomial we find that the discriminant is minus four which is less than zero so this parabola cannot intersect the x-axis the last thing we may need is the vertex of the parabola if you remember the vertex is h comma k and h is minus b over 2a and in our case b is minus 4 so minus b over 2a is 2. If you insert 2 in our equation 4 plus 5 is 9 and minus uh, 4 times 2 is minus 8 so we get 1. So the vertex of the parabola is 1. So we can simply plot this graph like this but if you're still uh, wondering where this parabola cuts the y-axis, all you need to do is insert x equals 0. If you insert x equals 0 in this equation, you are going to see that the result is plus 5. So the parabola intersects the point 5. Uh, we may talk about linear equality, inequalities and how may we encounter these inequalities in our real life. There are many, many examples we may present, but the most interesting one is this bridge. Let me check the name of this bridge. I'm sorry. This is the Akashi Bridge. And the, and the ropes between the two legs of this bridge has a certain type of shape. It's, it looks like a U, a very widened U. It's called a catenary, by the way. How much is the area under the rope? I mean, the area under this rope and the bridge uh, we cannot actually calculate it at this moment, but we can say that the y uh, variable is related to the x variable. So the distance of the road is related to the height in this in this in this inequality. Y is less than 188 times 10 to the minus 6 times 
x squared. So this is a very interesting example how an inequality may just uh, come in front of us. Once again, you may go back to your book and read this chapter fully uh, from your book. And I suggest that you solve as many questions as possible. There are very nice e examples and exercises. I'll see you in our le next lecture. Thank you very much. Bye bye.